Okay, salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Last time uh, we started to talk about expect max uh, search, and the uh, the idea of expect max search is that we assume that uh, the opponent is not optimal. The opponent is not playing uh, against us always, and there is uncertainty in um, in the decisions that the opponent is making. If that's the case, then we model that by what we call Expectimax tree, uh, where we have what we call chance nodes. Okay, instead of the uh, main nodes, we'll have chance nodes, and <clears throat> the value of the chance nodes will be the expected uh, value, uh, not the uh, the minimum value over the children which means that we'll have to compute the expect the uh, weighted average of the values of the children. So if we have this, uh, this example, um, we have, we have uh, here the max node and we have at that level uh, the chance nodes and we want to compute the uh, value of the game. So what is the value of the game in this case? Any, anyone wants to, uh, to try with me? What would be the value of this game? How, how would we compute it? Anyone? Do you hear me? So how will we, how will we compute the value of the game here? Should I call names here? Yusuf? Yusuf? Yusuf, are you with us? Okay, right. Muhammad Fawzan? Muhammad? Okay, uh, Muhammad? Yes, well, how can we do this, uh, Muhammad? How can we get the value of the game here? Very good. So well, let's assume that since we don't get the probabilities, let's assume that we have equal probabilities. Okay, so what will be the value of this node then? It will be, tell me the equation, the expression. Yes, so one, 1 over 3 times 3 plus 1 over 3 times 12 plus 1 over 3 times 9. So like, this is like the average of them, right? Uh, so 3, uh, 12, 9, the average of them is 8. So that, that's the value of this. How about this one, uh, Muhammad? which is the average, which will be 4. How about here? Seven. Okay. Now, how about the value of the game? It should be 8y. Yeah, because we are here maximizing, so 8, 4, 7, the maximum is 8. So the value of the game will be 8. Okay, thanks, Muhammad. Any questions about that? Any questions? Is it clear? Okay. Now, uh, if you remember, the um, uh, for the uh, Minimax uh, search, we had two uh, um, efficiency strategies that we can apply to Minimax to make it more efficient. The first one was pruning. The second one was depth limited search. So can we apply pruning here for Expectimax? Let's think together. Um, if we assume that this is actually Minimax for now, okay, for a second, let's assume that we have here uh, main nodes. So here, the, uh, the value of the main node here will be three, right? So this three will be passed uh, back to the root. Now the root is uh, having less uh, 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 greater than or equal to three. 
okay when we get this two from uh, from that node now this value is less than or equal to two this value is greater than or equal to three that means that we should prune here okay we should not look into these edges because whatever the value uh, that we will get from here we will it will it will not it will never be propagated to the root because the root has uh, uh, more than three and this will be less than two anyway so this uh, part of the tree will never be executed will never be explored so we'll, we will prune it that's if we assume that we have main nodes here okay now let's get to the reality and get back to the expecting max search now uh, the value of this uh, of this uh, node as we uh, we did it earlier that will be eight now eight will be passed to uh, to the root now the root has greater than or equal to eight okay um, now with this two should we prune the rest of the uh, of the edges yusuf <laughs> okay, uh, so what do you think, Yusuf? Should we do pruning or not? Or can we do pruning or not? Yes, yes, very good. So we, we cannot be, uh, we, there's no any guarantee, there's no guarantee here about the value because as we move, as we uh, explore more ages, the value here will change. Okay, so that now the uh, electricity is on again, so we are on the safe side. Um, uh, the the value here might be zero, okay, which is which will not change anything, but the value here might be one thousand, okay, and that will make a big change here, okay, and which which will be passed from that node to the root, okay. So we will not be able to say just okay, we'll we'll prune here. Will not do this uh, this sub three. No, we cannot do that because what we are doing here is not minimizing uh, or not maximizing. Always, we sometimes uh, take the weighted average, and the weighted average will depend on every value of uh, of the children. So, in this case, pruning is complex. We will not be able to do that to do it actually. If we did it, the value of the game will change. Remember, in many max. Pruning doesn't affect the value of the game because we will prune the parts that we will never explore anyway in, in, in playing the game. So it doesn't actually change the decisions that we should make. But here, if we do pruning, that will make uh, that will change the, uh, the values and thus pruning here is not feasible. Any questions about that? Okay, how about the other one, which is depth limited search? Can we do depth limited search here? So, uh, just uh, to remind you what we mean by depth limited search, we can say that this is the um, the uh, uh, the values of the terminal nodes, but due to time limitations, we maybe uh, uh, limit our search to this level. Okay. If we do so, then we have to evaluate. Okay, we, we have to use the uh, evaluation function here to give us an estimation of the value of this subtree, and we have to also use, of course, the evaluation function here and so on. So at that level, we'll assume that these are terminal nodes, and to get their utilities, we'll have to use an evaluation function. Okay, so for example, you might find that the value here is 400, maybe instead of 492. And 300 instead of 362, and, and so on. So these are this will be approximations of the actual values. The question is, can we do that with expected max or not? We we saw that we should not or we cannot do pruning with expected max. Can we do depth limited search here? Anyone other than Yusuf? Anyone? Do you still have uh, midterm exams this week? Yeah. The next lecture, mashallah, okay. And you, you are preparing for the next lecture by attending this lecture. Okay, this is good. Yeah, yeah inshallah. Wish you great success, inshallah. 
طيب uh, what do you think anyone other than Yusuf Yusuf has an exam next uh, next uh, lecture يعني you should save him anyone طيب يوسف but but that what, what do you mean by twice ah there is a no okay uh, yusuf uh, there is a difference between expectation and approximation okay <laughs> Okay, why do you think why do you think we are approximating twice? Okay. Yeah, but the probabilities are not approximations. The probabilities are part of the model, so we are doing the expectations because we have the probabilities. So that's not an approximation. The approximation in here is done by the evaluation function. And that's exactly what we do also in Minimax, right? So it's it's not very different from that. So we we would say here that yes, we can do depth limited search, but the problem here is that, or not a problem, but the 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 issue here is that we will probably require, or this will probably require uh, more work to compute because we are computing uh, uh, expectations here. Okay, uh, so we'll not be able to prune anything. Uh, and uh, it's not only that we we need to do um, uh, to to compute some uh, some expectations here, so we might do more work. But still, it's still possible that we can do uh, depth limited search. Of course, uh, um, uh, we can use the approximations using the evaluation function, as we did in uh, in Minimax. Okay, any question about this? So the uh, conclusion here is that. We, we will not be able to do pruning, but we will be able to do depth limited search. Okay, now um, let's talk about probabilities, a quick refresh of probabilities, and then we'll talk about uh, our assumptions based on these probabilities. Um, if you remember from your uh, probabilities course or statistics course, I think you might have taken more than even one course. Uh, there is a concept called the random variable, and the random variable always is uh, indicating the outcome of a random process or an, uh, an event that we don't know the outcome for. We are not certain about its outcome. Okay? So we indicate the outcome of that event by a random variable. So the random variable represents an event whose outcome is unknown to us. Like what? Like, uh, like the weather tomorrow. Okay? Um, so I might think that the weather can be sunny, can be cloudy, can be rainy, right? We don't know exactly what will be the outcome of the uh, of the weather. We might have a model of that, but we are not certain, not 100% sure that the weather tomorrow will be like that. So the value, the outcome of, or the value of the weather, or the condition of the weather tomorrow, can be modeled or can be represented by a random variable. Now, each possible outcome of that random variable might have a weight or might have a probability, okay? These probabilities are representing what we call the probability distribution. So the probability distribution is an ass assignment of weights to the outcomes. So I can say it might be rainy tomorrow 20, with a probability 20% and uh, sunny uh, 50% and uh, cloudy 30%, okay? So that's a probability distribution. For every outcome, every possible outcome, we have a weight, okay? And we call that weight a probability. So here, here's another example about a uh, highway, like al Shamal, for example. al Shamal might be free or might be empty, okay, of, of traffic with a probability 25% and uh, having light traffic 50 time, 50 percent with 50 with probability 50 percent and very crowded or heavy traffic with heavy traffic 25 percent of the time okay so we can think of it that way is that these probabilities um, uh, can be thought of what percentage of the time 
the outcome will happen to be that value. Okay, and at any time, what is the probability of of having this uh, this row to be uh, empty or uh, light with with light traffic or with heavy traffic? Okay, this is called probability distribution. Of course, you know that uh, from the laws of probability um, that the sum of these values will be one, and of course these values will be non-negative. And uh, with more information that we know, the probabilities might change. And for example, if I told you that now the time is uh, 8 a.m. And you know 8 a.m. is, is, uh, is a rush hour, right? Uh, everyone is going to, uh, to his or her job so, or his or her work. So knowing that, or giving, given that we know that the time is 8 a.m., the probability of having heavy traffic will increase. So the prior probability here was 25%. Now, given that the hour or the time is 8 a.m., the probability might increase to 60%. Okay? So with more evidence, with more information, probabilities might, uh, might may change. We'll talk about that, inshallah, more when we talk about probabilistic reasoning, inshallah, later uh, this semester, uh, when we uh, cover uh, Bayesian networks. Um, now, about expectations... When we compute, when we have a random variable, that means that the random variable can, can take any of um, a set of possible values with probabilities. Now, if I, uh, if I ask you what is the expected value of that random variable, this is actually the weighted average of the outcomes. Okay, so it's, a, it's, a, it's an average of outcomes, but this average is weighted for each outcome by its probability. This is exactly what we mean by the expected value. So it's not just with that we multiply uh, things and we add them. The meaning of it is that it is a weighted average. That's the expected value. If I, uh, um, um, if I observe it, the value of that random variable so many times, then on average, the value of that random variable will be the expected value. Okay? So, for example, if I want to compute how long uh, it will take me to the airport, what is the expected time that I will take to go to the airport through a specific uh, highway? So, if I have these probabilities, it is 25% of the time uh, empty or none, no traffic, light traffic 50% of the time, heavy traffic 25% of the time, and we also know that time itself that it will take us to go to the airport. Assuming that it is empty, it will take 25%, uh, it will take 20 minutes. Uh, with uh, uh, light traffic, it will take 30 minutes. With heavy traffic, it will take 60 minutes. Then the expected value of getting to the airport is the weighted average of them. So we multiply these uh, corresponding values, we add them, we get the expected value. Here the expected value is 35 minutes. Okay, based on that model, it will never take, by the way, 35 minutes because it will take either 20 or 30 or 60. Of course, this is a simplified model, assuming that there's only three cases always and assuming that these values are actually accurate, 20, 30, 60. So this 35 minute is not any of these values and it will never be any of these values. Whenever we, we go to the airport using this model, or assuming that this model is 100% accurate, we'll never get uh, in, uh, to the airport in, in 35 minutes. But if we repeat that multiple times, then on average, it will be 35 minutes. Okay? That's the uh, meaning of the expected value. Of course, you, I think you, uh, you studied that before, but this is just a fashion. Um, any question about that? Okay, now, um, where do the probabilities come from? Where do we get these values of probabilities? Okay, we kind of touched upon that uh, last lecture. We said that the model, uh, the game itself might have randomness in its... Uh, um, uh, in its rules, okay, we might uh, uh, actually roll a die as a part of the game. So we will assume that if that's the case, we will assume that we have a uniform distribution over the outcomes of the of the die. 
another possibility is that um, uh, the uh, the opponent is we, we don't know what the opponent is actually doing so there is some uncertainty about the opponent about the behavior of the opponent okay so we'll have to uh, model it with, uh, with with some probability so for example if i don't know that if uh, uh, if i don't know if the opponent is uh, always uh, is is actually uh, playing against me i mean optimal always playing against me or uh, sometimes uh, he is just random so if i don't know if the opponent is really advanced experienced uh, player or just naive player maybe i can say okay i have these two uh, options i will assume 50 50 50 50 percent the opponent will be optimal and 50 percent the opponent will be uh, will be random so that's this is now the the model that uh, this is these are the assumptions that i will reflect in my model okay uh, maybe also, as we said uh, the last time, uh, the uh, the uh, the environment might be uncertain. If I do this uh, this decision, then uh, there is on there is uncertainty of whether I will do it actually in reality in the right way or not. So there is some probabilities here. Um, so whenever we have um, a, um, a uh, an outcome that is out of our control then we will have a chance node okay so that's that's how the uh, the expected max search uh, tree will uh, uh, will be constructed okay we'll always have a chance node whenever we uh, whenever we have something that is completely out of our control and we are uncertain of um, for now we will assume that the priorities will be given to us later we might relax this but for now we will assume that the probabilities are fixed for us one thing uh, that is important to uh, to uh, understand here is that the fact that we don't uh, we have some uncertainty about the behavior of the opponent for example doesn't mean that the opponent actually is rolling a die or is is actually random but that's what we assume about the opponent okay uh, the opponent might actually be determinist, uh, not not complete the miss, but I mean he might have a strategy that is not exactly matching what we think about him. Okay, he might not be completely random, as we assume uh, uh, it is. So there might be mismatch between what we assume and the reality, and we'll talk about that inshallah uh, later in this lecture. Let's think about uh, this uh, quiz together and see. Uh, how we can model this problem so let's say that we know that our opponent is actually running a depth 2 mini max using the result 80 percent of the time and moving randomly otherwise what does that mean it means that i am playing an opponent where i don't know exactly the strategy that he is using at every turn but i know that 80 percent of the time the opponent will use depth 2 mini max will be optimal with depth 2, 80% of the time. And 20% of the time, the opponent will complete will, will be completely random. So he, he will make completely random decisions 20% of the time. Now the question is, what research should we use? Should we use uh, minimax or expect max? And, and based on that, we'll see what the tree will look like. What do you think? Is it... Uh, mini max or expect max give you uh, uh, some time to think and then we'll do it together so think when you should use expect max and when you should use mini max so what do you think here Any ideas? Anyone other than Yusuf? No brave people uh, today? Yeah, don't worry, we, will, we are discussing together. Yes, Nahid? Expect Max, why is that?
yes 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 so minimax means that the opponent is optimal the the opponent is always playing against us is it the case here Nahid? sorry i didn't hear you yes yes so it's not the case that the opponent is always playing against us okay so if that's the case thanks Nahid. if that's the case then um then we should model the opponent or we should use a Mac, uh, expect a max search okay uh, minimax is is uh, um, uh, is assuming always that the opponent is is playing against us okay always optimally but that's not the case based on the the, the description of the problem 80 percent of the time the opponent will be actually against us with depth two and 20 percent will be uh, will be earned. so the uh, the uh, answer here is expect the max okay type now how the tree will look like we will have here the um, uh, the uh, the turns okay so the, here is the turn of uh, of uh, of the agent okay so that's the agent now the agent will take maybe one of two decisions okay let's say uh, for example x or y okay in both cases the turn now for the opponent and we know the opponent will we are not certain about what the opponent will do right if we are not certain about what the opponent will do and what the the options of the opponent uh, will be then i mean not the options what what exactly the strategy or what uh, uh, the the decisions that will be made for sure by the opponent then we'll have to model it by a chance node okay so that at that level we have to model the uh, opponent by chance nodes now the question now is for this for each of these chance nodes what are the probabilities what are the probabilities we know that 80 percent of the time will be um, uh, the opponent will will make a uh, depth to minimax and 20 percent of the time the opponent will be uh, will, will be completely random now let's assume for now just for simplicity that we don't have this 80 percent it is always making a random decision and we know that the opponent has two um, uh, two decisions a and b okay what should be the probability in this case assuming that the opponent is always making random choice so there's no 80 percent it's actually 100 100 percent randomly what will be the probabilities here any uh, any ideas Nahid? Yeah, it should be 50-50, right? 50% here, 50% here, because it's completely random. Okay, and, and with completely random, we assume uniform distribution. So it will be 0.5 here, 0.5 here. Okay, if, if we only have two possible, uh, out, uh, possible decisions. Okay, now, any, any question about that? Still, this is not the problem that we are solving here, right? Because we are just assumed for now, uh, for a second, that we are always the opponent is always random if that's the case then it's 50 50. okay any question about that before we uh, we solve the actual problem here is it clear is it not clear is it 50 50 clear okay clear time now let's see uh oops okay uh, now let's see um oh, the x and y it's fine uh, now if that's not the case and we have 80 percent of the time we will do depth to minimax okay and 20 percent will go random so we have two options here okay the first option is to do depth to uh, minimax okay which means that we will have to get the probabilities of the uh, of the decisions 
How can we get the probabilities of the decisions? We have to run uh, um, expect the uh, 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 depth to minimax and see what will be the decision of uh, of the agent of the opponent in that case. Okay, so we will expand the minimax uh, tree for the opponent with depth two, and we figure out what is the best option for the uh, for the uh, for the opponent. Okay, let's say that this is option A. Okay, so that means that with eighty percent of the time at that turn, the opponent will take option A. Type. We said that we are not done yet. Okay. We said that we have twenty. Uh, uh, in in other uh, in the other case, twenty percent of the time it will be completely random, which means that we also have. Yani, uh, in in that option, let's say that we have two options, right? Eighty percent and twenty percent. Oh, sorry. So eighty percent and twenty percent. In 80%, it will always be A. I mean, in that case. Okay? In 20% of the time, it is random. Right? So, we can get A or we can get B. A, 50% of the time. And B, 50% of the time. Right? Because it's completely random. That means that, actually... It's not here 50% because this is 20%, right? This, so that means that this 20% is divided as 10 for A and 10 for B. So that's now 10% for A and 10% for B. Okay? If we, if, we, uh, if, it, if we took the option of the random uh, choice. Okay? So that means that overall, overall, we will get A, 80 plus 10%, which means 90%, and B, 10%. So, it is something like this. A, 0.9, and B, 0.1. So, now we got the actual probabilities that we will use in our model. Okay? And that's what we will have now. And based on that, we'll compute the expected value here, and then we compute the, the, the value here if we are running... Uh, um, for for this uh, for this turn, okay. So that means that for every chance node, we'll have to do this expansion, this simulation, get the value that we want to get, and then uh, aggregate the probabilities so that we can get the actual probabilities here. Is that clear? Any questions? Yes, Yusuf. Well, this is this is this is these are the weights. These are the weights. Yes. This is how we compute the weights. In this case. Okay. Sure. Any other questions? So is it clear? So that means that for every node, okay, for every node, we have to do this. So we have to do this here. We have also to do this here. By the way, every chance node. We'll have to do this uh, computation, okay? And then we compute the probabilities, okay? So here it might be it might be different uh, decision, okay? Uh, based on the uh, based on that state, okay? Uh, assuming that we took uh, the, the our player our agent took the y action, then maybe the tree here the depth two tree here will be different from that. Maybe b will be the best choice, and then we'll have to aggregate it with with this part so we might get different uh, different uh, probabilities here okay so doing this simulation with every chance node of course will make things very slow okay very slow uh, much slower than uh, than uh, in many max of course because for every node for every chance node we have to do some computations to compute the probabilities and to uh, uh, of course, plus the uh, the actual computation of the expectation, but to actually get the probabilities, we have to do these uh, these simulations. Okay. Any questions on this? 
Okay, now let's talk about modeling assumptions. We, as we uh, in, in expect max, we assume that the opponent has some randomness in, in his process, in his strategy. Okay, and we model this randomness by the probabilities. What if our model is not a good match with the reality? It, it might happen, right? Let's think about the, uh, the extremes. So the extremes here are being optimistic or pessimistic. Okay? Tafail and Mutashayim. There is, of course, a dangerous danger for or risk uh, if we are always optimistic. Okay? Optimistic here means that we are, um, we are not assuming the worst case. We are assuming that there is some randomness and we are uh, making decisions based on that. The problem is that if we assumed it, if we, if we assumed the world this in, in this way, but the world actually is adversarial, or the agent, the opponent is actually playing against us, of course this will have a bad effect. Okay, we will not play well, we will not win in this case. There is a big risk because we are too naive. We are optimistic. We are thinking that the uh, it's like we are uh, playing, uh, uh, let's say, chess game with a child, okay? Thinking that that child is just a beginner, it's naive, right? We didn't, we didn't know that this child maybe is the, uh, cha the champion of the country, okay? <laughs> we didn't know that. Um, so he's really much more experienced in that than we, we expected. When we play that child without knowing that he is a champion, of course, we might make any bad assumptions, bad decisions, okay? And, of course, that will have a side effect. So this is something like, uh, like this. We are just uh, moving around, not knowing that there are ghosts somewhere, okay? And that, that's a danger, dangerous place to, to be in. If I know that he, this place is dangerous, then I will be cautious. I will take better decisions, okay? So that's the danger of being uh, optimistic, or, or that's actually the dangerous optimism, okay? Of course, optim being optimistic is not always bad, and it's not always good, okay? Here we are talking about the case where it is actually bad, okay? On the other extreme, the dangerous pessimism, okay? You assume always the worst case when it's not likely. Like what? You assume that um, uh, you are playing against the, uh, the world champion, when he is actually a naive player. Okay? So you are very cautious. You are very cautious. You might win eventually, but it will take you some time. It's not optimal way of playing that player. You are too cautious. Okay? It's like being afraid of anything around you, even if it's a rabbit. It's not a ghost. Uh, just being, being uh, pessimistic. Okay? I'm always afraid. I'm afraid that a uh, car will hit me outside. I'm afraid that the building will uh, will collapse. Now, it might happen, by the way, but if we always assume the worst case, <laughs> we'll never live. Okay? So, uh, assuming the worst case when it's not always the case, when it's just likely, which, when, when it's not likely, okay, uh, when there is some randomness in the, uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the strategy of the opponent, then this is dangerous. This is risky. Okay, so assumptions versus reality. If we think about the two-player uh, game, we have Pac-Man and we have the ghost. Pac-Man might have some assumption about the strategy that the ghost is taking, and the ghost also has its real strategy. Pac-Man might think that the ghost is optimal, or might think that the ghost is uh, is random. If Pac-Man assumes that the ghost is optimal, then he will run minimax, right? Because minimax means that always the opponent is playing against me. If he thinks that the ghost is random, then he will uh, uh, play expectimax or will use expectimax search. On the other side, the ghost might be adversarial, means he's always playing, he's always playing against us, is optimal, or he might be random. What is the best case here? The best scenario? The best scenario is the, is the um, perfect match 
between the assumption and the reality. So, for example, if Pac-Man assumes that the opponent is optimal, and the actu actually, uh, sorry, if Pac-Man assumes that the opponent is random, and the ghost is actually random, so Pac-Man will take advantage of that. Okay? And if we played the game five times here, here we assume that Pac-Man is using depth for search, and the ghost is using depth to search, Pac-Man will win five out of five games with that average score. Because there is a, a, good a good match between the assumption and the reality. I'm not too cautious, but I'm also not too uh, uh, optimistic. Okay, I know that there is some randomness and I will, I will take advantage of it. The other case which is also good is when Pac-Man assumes that the ghost is optimal and the ghost is actually optimal. Okay, so I'm playing against a smart uh, player knowing that he is a smart and he is actually smart a smart player, so I will make decisions based on that, okay? And my decisions will be good. So in this case, uh, Pac-Man also won five out of the five games. Of course, the score here is, is a bit less than the score, just because here the game is easier, because the ghost is not, uh, is not optimal, okay? But these two cases are good, because um, there is a perfect match between how Pac-Man or how the agent model the opponent and the reality about the opponent. Now, the other two cases are not good, of course. One of them is really bad. One of them is not as good as the two cases here. The first one is when I assume or the agent assumes that the opponent is optimal, uh, the opponent is, uh, uh, is random, but he's actually optimal. So that's the worst ever case, right? I, I'm very optimistic, but actually things are not that <laughs> are not that easy. Okay, the player I assume that the player is naive, but actually he is uh, he's a mastermind. Okay, so in that case, if we uh, play the five games, of course Pac-Man might have some chance, but overall the score will be negative on average. Okay, so he will actually uh, lose the four games out of five. The other case, when we uh, when Pac-Man assumes that the, the opponent is um, uh, is optimal, but the opponent's ac opponent is actually random, then Pac-Man is is pessimistic. He would be more cautious, okay, thinking that the opponent is uh, is not uh, is not naive, is uh, is not opt is is optimal, but actually the opponent is naive, okay. So being more cautious might uh, uh, might slow you down, might might. Uh, you might make decisions that are really unjustifiable, uh, okay, based on the case of the opponent, but eventually you will win. I, I mean, based on this, uh, these conditions, you will win. But, of course, the score here, uh, if you look at that, is less than generally than this score, because that's not a perfect match. Um, we are more pessimistic than we should. Okay? Now, let's see videos uh, quickly to show these four cases. Here is a video when the ghost is random and Pac-Man thinks he's random. Okay, so this is a good match. So what will happen here? Of course, this is, um, uh, there is randomness. So every time we run it, it might give us a uh, different uh, outcome. Okay. Okay, you see here, uh, there is a good match between the model and the, the assumption and the reality. So Pac-Man uh, took advantage of that. Now, the other case, when um, the ghost is adversarial, the ghost is optimal, but Pac-Man thinks that he's random. So Pac-Man is more naive, is, is, is optimistic, okay? So that's, that's really bad. Assuming that I'm uh, playing against a naive person or a, naive, uh, a random person, a random player, but actually the player is optimal, okay? So that's, that's really bad. Actually, that's the worst, the worst case, okay? So... Uh, here I, I might actually win the game, but with running it multiple times, I might not, okay? Uh, because I'm assuming that he is naive, making some uh, decisions that uh, might not be uh, the best decisions. It happened here that Pac-Man won, but it won't be every time, of course. Here is uh, the third case when the ghost is random and Pac-Man thinks that uh, he is optimal. Okay, so Pac-Man here is very pessimistic. Okay.
okay very pessimistic more than it should so let's 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 see what will happen here so you see Pac-Man is hesitated he, because he thinks that the ghost is optimal but the ghost actually is naive okay so Pac-Man is not making good decisions because he's always considering the worst case okay so afraid of something that should not be afraid of uh, making uh, uh, movements that are not actually justifiable and um, it, he, he will go, go through this until he finds the chance direct to the food uh, food item so um, still not yeah here now the the uh, the the path is clear so he eventually uh, got it but of course after spending a lot of time I think there's one that we uh, that we skipped. Um, let's see. I think this one. Oh, not this one. I think. Yeah, this one. When the ghost is adversarial, but Pac-Man is. Uh, oh, not this one also. Wait, don't don't remember which one we uh, we. Uh... Anyone remembers which one we missed? Anyway, you have you will have the videos. You can you can run them, okay? And uh, and think about this mismatch I issue, the assumption that we have, and the actual reality, okay? If we model it the right way, if we think that if the the reality is that the opponent is random, then the best way is to be. Is to model it as random and if the opponent is uh, optimal then the best way is to model it as optimal okay modeling it as optimal or, or random means you will use mini max or expect max any question about what we covered this lecture I know that Yusuf you have a, an exam Do you have any questions Yusuf any questions from any other any other student Af Okay, then inshallah we'll stop here and uh, talk to you inshallah on Tuesday. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.